So, Nina, Wisconsin. The city takes care of this side. These merchants all got together. This is before, after. Retail sales went up by 35% just doing that. Beautification. And here's another statistic. I call this the 787 rule. 70% after 6 o'clock, 80, which I'm going to give you next, and then 70% of first-time sales come from curb appeal. Once we go in, like that Texas barbecue place, which had no curb appeal, once we go in, then we're fine. But that first time, that looks like a nice place to eat. It looks like a nice place to stay. It looks like a nice shop. Let's go in. That's what we do. Is it fair? No, but it's what we do as visitors. Here's the middle one. For 80% spending. I'm waiting for the guys. Usually there's some guys, that's all. I want you to take a look at the next picture, which was not staged. What do you see? How many times have you been done that? You know what? I only saw one bench in your whole downtown of Lower Main. I'll bet you there's more guys than that that come into Deadwood. That was not staged. Look at guy, 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 guy. They're all standing out there. The wives are inside. Think benches. You should have 100 benches in your downtown of Lower Main. And by the way, this is the only one I saw. Thank you, Deadwood. Get you know what? Best sign. Is the person that owns the shop here by chance? Way to go. They get it. But you know what I'd like you to do? And you might do this in the spring. Flank it with a pot on each side. Nice big pot. Yeah, see? Think benches. This is the power of beautification. You know, and the other thing is... look at it sometimes you need to work with your merchants and stuff I mean I just and it was this one it's I, I no offense but you know what I think you need some education or something I'm going look at your beautiful architecture and then you ah. and by the way here's another one why can't you screen your dumpsters for crying out loud That's right across to Hampton over there. I mean, I know what all this wood is over here, and you know, and and uh, I mean, you know, could we screen these somehow? It's just, it's just, you 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 look like a second-class garage sale town. You, but it, you know, great wine tasting room. But look at this stuff. There's a way to screen these things. You know, even this sports bar, I don't know how long that's been broken. Maybe it just happened. You know, somebody went through and a rock. But you know, judge the book by the cover, first impressions. You know, look at this. I would love to see you extend these sidewalks right out here, except for where trolleys go in. And by the way, where those trolleys are, that's where your delivery vehicles go also. And delivery vehicles go there till 10 or whatever, so you can work with this to see you, or just do those temporary little sidewalk cafes out in front of restaurants. But there was no vacation. And so, so you know, and a couple of things. Even stuff like this, I just go, look at the billboard, the frame is all rotted, and, you know, I'm going, this doesn't look like 1870s, you know, this just isn't, I, who are you, Deadwood? You look pretty tacky. So, you know, you know what? Pick on Deadwood. I'm here in February. It's a mud season out there. So I went to Google Earth and I grabbed summertime and you still don't have any curb appeal. Now, I know this was. I can tell when. I, well, I know it was first week of August, probably. But isn't that when, isn't that when Sturgis is? And so still, there's nothing. There's no softening and everything. And I don't know. This might be 10 years old. I do see another bench right there. And by the way, bench should always be at the facade facing out.
always. Never at the curb facing in, never at the curb facing out. They should always be at the side facing out, and they should always be flanked with pots and planters. It makes you welcoming, even if nobody's sitting in them. So I had pictures from the middle of the summer thinking there must be beautification somewhere, and there wasn't a shred of it. Yet 70% of first-time sales come from curb appeal. And then get rid of all the closed signs. You know what? That's what I hate about hardware stores. That's what they sell. Wouldn't it be cool if you did this? We will be open Tuesday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. I know. Even do some blank ones, the Chamber of Commerce. Somebody do some blank ones and let merchants just write with grease pencil in there. We will be open. It's an invitation to come back, not go away. And what I saw was a lot of go aways. Create a lure to pull of customers in. I'll give you one quick story. This is in Omak, Washington, a town about your side, northeastern Washington state. Grandma's at it. I walked by here, took this picture. She had a little pot there, a little old barrel. Sells home accents, you know, candles and all that kind of stuff. I took this picture. I was walking downtown doing the assessment like I did for you. About 20 minutes after I came back, there was a line of people trying to get in the store. Here's the door. There was a line of people going all the way down the sidewalk trying to get in. I'm going, what the heck is going on there? I looked behind the line. There was two kids in those chairs eating ice cream cones. It turns out she had a little sign in the window that said ice cream. I couldn't see it because of the reflection. So you know what I did? I caught the line. I worked my way into the store, and she had a little three-foot ice cream counter. You know one of those little portable ones? You wheel it out and plug it in. It's like this big. And I worked my way up to the counter. I said, ma'am, is this your shop? She goes, you bet. And I said, aren't you worried about people eating ice cream in your store and spilling? She goes, every once in a while we have an accident. But you know what? Look at all the people in my store. And I said, do you, I mean, obviously you're not in the ice cream business. She goes, oh, no, no, no. It's just a way to get people in. And I said, you know, if I was you, I'd give those kids free ice cream and make them sit out there all day long. She goes, well, that's the kids. One free ice cream, but there's an unlimited supply of kids, and they do have to eat them in those chairs. I said, do you keep track of how much non-ice cream sales come because of the ice cream sales. She goes, yeah, 70% of her nine ice cream sales come because people went in there for the ice cream. What's the lure that's going to hold people in your stores? Pretty cool, huh? What is it that's going to do that? Number 19, bring downtown to life. In Cannon Beach, Oregon, town of about 2,500 people, so I'm telling you, these are small towns. Thousand dollar year budget, and they pay magicians, musicians, street performers. They pay them thirty five dollars. He was paid thirty five dollars. He makes the rest of his money from tips. In some towns, they do this to start it, and after a while, they don't even have to pay them. They're just down there because they make the money in tips because people are downtown. And so what they do is they start on Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays. Is what they do during the peak season. And he's a magician out there doing that. This is in. Now, Columbia. This is in January. But temperatures are like it is in Deadwood. They're up 5,200 feet. These guys are all up there. They don't pay these guys. They're up 365 days a year. Greenville, uh, South Carolina. Here's Asheville, North Carolina. But all non-amplified music. Bring downtown to life. Make your downtown a third place. Whatever it is, if you have to fund it at first to get them going, Bring it to life. You know, there you go. I was in Asheville. There was this band out there. You know what time it is here when I took this picture? 4.15. There's a restaurant there and a restaurant there. I went in and found the owner. And I said, did you put the band out there? Yeah. And I said, how much did you pay him? 200 bucks. I said, how long are they out there? Four hours. They're out there from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And I said, when do you start serving dinner? So I said, five. I said, why do you have the band out there at four? This guy pays 100, that guy pays the other 100. They get the rest of their money from tips. And they sell CDs and stuff. And I says, why are you out there at four? And he says, you know what? We're open for drinks. By the time five o'clock runs, we're already full and we've already paid for the band. It works. And by all a non-amplified music. That's what you need to do. And so the best towns are bringing their downtowns to life. This guy makes a lot of money. He's playing the hammer dulcimer. That has nothing to do with drinking. 
It's this cool little harpsichord kind of instrument. And you know what happens is it's called a what? People will ask. And the second they start a conversation, he makes more than twice as much money because they feel obligated to tip him. This guy's doing a little stained glass. He's right on the sidewalk doing stained glass. He says, man, I have stuff in galleries. I sell 10 times more stuff when I'm up there. By the way, I'll give you a statistic. People are four times more likely to buy art when they meet the artist. I've even seen portable glass blowers downtown. I mean, potter's wheels bring downtown to life. And finally, I don't think you need to do this, but I, I mean, it's one of the 20 ingredients. I always say give downtown a name. The Pearl District in Portland, Oregon. You think beautification pays? But these are all towns, you know, Bricktown in Oklahoma City, Vancouver has gas town, Seattle Pioneer Square. And by the way, even little now British Columbia has Baker Street. You know the song Baker Street? Now you know where it came from. So call it something. Do, you do Lower Main Street or Main Street, that's okay. But you know what? When you name a, a district, it makes it a destination, not just a designation. Get it? Bourbon Street. See what I mean? The French Quarter. Those kinds of things. So it's something to think about. And finally, my last one, experiential marketing. And, uh, you know, can you, is that, that's in Allegheny, New York, a little town. You don't see historic buildings and stuff there, but does it look like a little Victorian village? It sells a feeling. It sells a feeling. That's what you need to do. Whatever that feeling is. And by the way, you want to know how you create a brand? First thing is visual cues when we drive by. And then people and attitudes, word of mouth, and finally all those things, publicity, social media. And so, all of these things you just saw are what you as merchants need to take the lead on. You may need the city to allow ordinances and allow certain things, but you need to take the lead on them. And then finally, I thought, here that just did not fit at all downtown. I've got a cheap answer for you. It's called trompe l'oeil. It's French for fool the eye. Take a look at this. This is in downtown Seattle where a trompe l'oeil er, uh, artist named Eric Groh came in and did this. This is for a Mercedes-Benz dealership, but take a look at this. That was all concrete block. There's a little bit of music, but I, have my, I forgot to turn my computer to switch it over to these speakers. But I see this, what he's doing here. It kind of speeds up. It lasts about three minutes. You okay with that? I want to show you what he did. They had to do something there that would really, so people would want to go take their Mercedes and park it in front of the Mercedes dealer, in front of this, and take their picture. So here he is. Here's what he's creating. And I'll let you watch this. Doesn't it look three-dimensional already? Trompe l'oeil is fool the eye. It's an architectural mural. It's not just a painting. Pretty cool, huh? You're going to see it unfold here. It takes him about, I think this took him about three weeks to do. You know what my first question was when I got there? How many cars have run right into the wall? He said, you know, what the, you know what the sales manager said? Why do you think we sell so many cars? <laughs> I haven't had that happen, but look at it. Notice even the shadows are painted on. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> and of course, it's a you know, German-made car, so they want to make it look very European. There, now they finished her hand up there. 
you can walk right up to this and you expect it to be three-dimensional. I mean, I could be this far away and I think it's three-dimensional. It's that much detail. So there's him and his wife and everything. There's what it looked like before, the sketch artist. There you go. Now watch this. We're going to zoom in. Keep watching. I mean, we're zooming right. Look at that. We're still zooming in. We're zooming in. We're still zooming in. <laughs> Is that cool or what? That's called Trump Loy. So, that's Trump Loy. That's all painted on. <laughs> Pretty clever, huh? Trump Loy. It's all painted on that truck. There you go. These are all fool the eye, hot and spicy. That's all painted on. These windows here are all painted on. All this stuff is painted on. This window here exists. This ladder is even painted on. They took an old big building and made it look like there was windows there. Look at this. This is all concrete. By the way, this is it under progress. There he is painting it. Same guy, same artist. Notice the shadows painted on. After. Before, during, after. That's in Chico, California. Before, after. By the way, these guys are painted on. So are these guys. <laughs> Even the guy taking the picture. This is in a brewery. Notice the hoses right there? This is before. There's the hoses after. Is that cool or what? You know, I said, how many people go up there? She goes, oh, people do. They walk right up here and they go. <laughs> Not knowing where they could walk into. This is Virginia City, Nevada, another old west town. This is all concrete block. But they had to make it look old west. They had to make it fit their brand. And they've been very good about sticking to it. All this is all painted on. Because it was all crumbling. It was 18... 40s building, 130 years old, they had to build it, but then they made it all this painted on so it still kept the facade. Even the girl here is painted on these windows. It fits the brand. Here's my favorite one. Go ahead, say it. Sitting on a corner and waiting for Arizona. Such a fine sight to see. There's a girl, my lord, in a bed Ford slowing down to take a look at me. There's the eagles. All of this is painted on. By the way, there's no building there, it's just the facade. Wow. 1.5 million people a year go there to get their picture taken in front of that facade. And they buy stuff. All this is painted on. All that. It's all Trump Loy. So I thought you should do that. You know what I mean? So it's an easy way without totally doing the facades. I know it's cheating, but it's a way that you could take that and I'll make it look. Even, even the bricks that you saw in that Mercedes one, they painted all the bricks next to it. It's concrete block, but it looks like it's a brick wall. It's all trompe ploy. First impressions. It's February. You're still promoting your Christmas things. And my impression is the theater only does this once a year and it's never open any other time. Is that true? All I see here is Scrooge of Deadwood. All I see is Christmas festivals. It's the middle of February. It's time to go in there, say, coming in 2014 and give me a list. It's an invitation to come back. Not that expensive to do. The trolleys here, you way, 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 way too much text. I'm not going to sit there and read through three or four paragraphs. Just tell me every 20 minutes, and where's a map, by the way, I don't know where it goes. I don't know where it goes. I don't know when it goes. The only way I got a brochure is when I finally went in the visitor information and asked for one. And so this is just too much stuff. I know it's a buck, but I don't know where it goes, how often it goes. It's been good. We're staying up at the lot. I go, maybe we should just, Doug even said, maybe we should just take the trolley down. I go, but I don't know how often it runs. I don't know when it comes back. There's no information. You know, why don't you put in there instead of that coming soon, whatever it is. It tells us that stuff's going on instead of just remodeling. You know, even right here, you know, I'm going, you got to do something this time of year. We'll be open in April. You know, and so I did go to the 76th Museum, and I was surprised 
one of the very, very few museums I've ever seen that was dedicated to an event. But I thought they did a good job. So I did go in there, I went inside, very nice lady told me how to take the tour around and I did go through the displays. And, uh, and I spent about half an hour in there. I love this carriage. That's a postal carrier and even has a stove inside. But I couldn't use my flash, so that's why it's a little blurry. But, and that's, that's totally understandable, I'm not complaining about that. But I thought the carriages were pretty cool. I thought it was a cool museum. I was downstairs and I walked out the door, I walked the door and I saw this building there clue what it is, if it's owned public, but there's no footprints in the snow, so I didn't bother. But I don't know if it's a museum or not. Like this, and I'm not too sure if this is sorted up or whether there's concessionaires in the summer, but you know what you could do? Perfect trompe l'oeil. See what I mean? You could have people in the windows there, make it painted like a window, and have people there, and it would be like a boarded up has-been. It's just a simple, cool thing you could do to make it look like it's an activity center people looking out the windows, maybe they're doing this. I'd probably be going up there and saying, hi, how are you? Oh, sorry. But those are things you knew. I don't know what it is, or if it's ever used. I did go in the visitor center. I thought these were great displays that talked about your historic preservation. I thought one of the best displays in town showing how it used to be. Hearing about the fire and the flood and, man, what they have been through. Talk about a town with grit. Pretty cool stories. Saw, I just saw these, I mean, it's, what you have here is just unbelievable, stunning, just really, really, really great stuff. Even the way they did this, all built like the old mines were, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, the way they did that, I thought that just it kind of fit in there, you know. And then, of course, look at this, your potential is simply amazing. You've got the bones to work with. You need to find a focus. And then recruit the businesses that fit that focus. If you're about art, let's go get them. And we'll promote the heck out of them. Whatever it is, what's your focus? Is it recreation? What is it? I mean, what you have here is amazing. And so, I want you to develop that 24-hour visitor. And finally, sit right there, there's a book spine, sign spotting, not a through street, evacuation route. You know, and so he's back. He didn't bring some, but they're pretty funny. Here's what I want you to remember. History isn't a point in time. Your history goes beyond 1876. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Sometimes we get so hung up on a date that we never grow forward. And once again, I'm not saying you throw your history under the bus at all. It is not a primary reason we're going to come here. It's something we do while we're here. You know the Smithsonian? Huge museum complex, the best museum in North America by far. Did you know that 85% of the people at the Smithsonian are in Washington, D.C. for another reason? But while they're there, it is a must-see. Only 15% of the people that go to Washington, D.C. are there specifically for the Smithsonian. And by the way, out of that 15%, 90% of them are for the Northeast. You know, within a couple-hour drive. So... That's what you have to remember. It's not a point in time. You know, I kick out of merchants like this that, you know, <laughs> these are all courtesy of Doug. You know, or, you know engage the customers, create these extending experiences. I, saw, I said, man, I want to take my kids there. That's in Salem, Massachusetts. Thank you, huh? And there you go. You want, you want to keep your visitors in town? Just do signs like that? <laughs> that was on the Oregon coast, I think. And if you need to, you may have to turn to religion for answers. <laughs> I'm not too sure what the that one. And finally, when I saw all these ads, and they say, the best in the West, uh, Deadwood, where legends lived, where legends lived and died. Uh, your Deadwood deal, uh, don't miss the Deadwood jam, the West doesn't get any wilder. Fuck, inner outlaw, I love that. 
you know, uh, make your next meeting one for the history book. So you have all these kind of old West feeling and everything. And I get here and I'm going, where's the experience? You're not delivering on the promise. And so that's what you have to figure out. Well, what is that promise? What is it that you're going to deliver on? Because that's the last thing you want people to think of you. And so that is all I have for you tonight. And so, you know, because I've taken up two and a half hours, I let you come up here and ask me questions. I'll let you go home. I know it's late, and, but I want you to stick around one-on-one -on -one and, and answer your questions. In, uh, give me a couple of minutes. We will have the assessment findings and suggestions report for you. Um, it will have all these slides in there. It will have lots of suggestions in here. It is being filmed. I need a copy of this film, too. And then it will be what, what posted. Where will the film be? Do you know yet? Where, what? where, where they can where they can can they see this? Okay, uh, keep your uh, on on uh, your your city, um, and Kevin will have it, and we'll get it posted somewhere. Because you know, I bet there's a lot of people that should have been here that weren't. Right? That's usually the way it works. And so this is a great opportunity for you. I think Deadwood needs to sit down and find your focus. And by the way. For what you're doing right now, here's my question for you. How's that working for you? And that's what you have to answer. But what you have here is as good or better than Jackson, Wyoming. Then, by the way, Sisters Oregon Town 1100 in the middle of nowhere, they have the highest per capita retail sales per square foot of any city in the state of Oregon. Population 1100. There's no reason why you can't do that too. You have to find your focus. Then you recruit the businesses in here that support that. And by the way, even the casinos need something other than just casinos. So, thank you so much for spending the evening tonight. Thank you very, very much. You're free. Thank you very much. Thank you.